We're spending a few minutes with author and journalist Kati Martin, whose newest book is an extraordinary memoir. It is Paris, a love story. It is about three extraordinary lives, hers as well as her former husband's, the late Peter Jennings and the late Richard Holbrook. Uh, you wrote this book in the wake of the sudden death of Richard Holbrook. How did writing this book help you come to terms not only with his death, but the next chapter in your life? It was a healing experience writing this. Right after Richard's death, I started keeping a journal. Frankly, I couldn't sleep at night. And, um, and so I would write down the astonishing outpouring from all the world, from, from high and low. I was, I was hearing um, phone messages, letters, everybody was, was writing to me and I wanted to record that whole period and plus my life had been shattered. And uh, in addition, I had to move house. Uh, could no longer, I didn't want to stay in a place any longer that, that uh, was so full of ghosts. And in the process of packing up, I found letters that I had written in three different stages of my life from Paris, which is at the heart of, of this, this memoir. Paris is where every good thing seems to have happened to me. And so I found letters that I wrote as a kid to my parents when I was a student in Paris. And then when um, Peter and I were, were courting as, uh, as ABC foreign correspondents, and I had my first big break as a reporter covering the Ayatollah Khomeini. And, uh, and then the, the third and best chapter, which was um, encountering Richard Holbrook um, and uh, eventually buying a place in Paris, which is where we spent a lot of the last two years when he was uh, Obama's envoy to uh, Afghanistan and, and Pakistan. So it was a healing experience for me to get this down. And in a way, it's my way of, of, uh, of making these people I have lost, Peter and Richard, both both gone way too soon, permanent. I have them in this book, and, I, and actually I have my life now recorded, or at least a big chunk of it, uh, between, between covers. It's a tough warts and all book look at three imperfect people, famous people but imperfect people. You write of the tensions in your two marriages. What did your children take away from this book, and also Richard Holbrook's children? Um, you know, we're all human beings, even, even uh, public men such as Richard Holbrook and Peter Jennings and to a lesser extent myself, we're all made of the same human stuff. Uh, I, think, I think the reader knows what's honest and what isn't. This is an honest account and um, I'm, I'm um, as tough on myself as I am on, on these two amazing men with whom I shared my life. Um, it's, it's not a tell-all book, but it's a very honest account, and I think that that gives it credibility. There, there are no perfect marriages except in fairy tales. Richard and I had a long and uh, very loving uh, relationship, marriage, but uh, like everybody else, we encountered some bumps in the road, and um, I, I, actually I write about that because because Richard comes off so well in that, because it was he who who um, uh, wouldn't give up on. I, I I had a moment when when I got distracted, because uh, he was distracted too. He with politics, me with discovering my my own personal history, which had been withheld from me. So I think he comes off really well in this, and I'm hoping that others will take away from that the fact that marriages have to be worked through just as grief has to be worked through. You can't, I, I just experienced the biggest shock anybody can experience, or among them, uh, the loss of a, uh, of a beloved uh, mate partner. And uh, I don't think that, that we should be paralyzed by grief. I, I, this book is about working my way through grief, pushing through that, to, to come out at a different place. I will always have Richard with me. And Peter, of course, was the father of my children. And, and um, through my children, I have Peter with me too. But Richard is, is, in, is with me because I've recorded who he is, not just as the brilliant diplomat, everybody knows about that, but as a man in full. 
He was your soulmate. What drew you to him? Oh my gosh, he was an amazing guy. He, he had so much charisma and magnetism, and, and plus living with him meant living history, really. I mean, I was with him when he was uh, negotiating the peace in, in, in Bosnia. He and Richard ended the, the most violent war in Europe since the Second World War. And also we were together at the United Nations when he was ambassador and we traveled to 12 African countries together and brought AIDS to the Security Council. First time ever that a health issue was so dealt with. So we, we never had a boring uh, day in our, in our life. He was, he was the most intellectually alive person. Also, a whole lot of fun. And I try to capture that in this book. And you also lived through some tumultuous times with Peter Jennings. I mean, he wooed you overseas. It was an amazing love story at the time. Yes, um, <laughs> we, we were foreign correspondents together. I was the ABC's newest and least experienced, and he was the star already. And um, uh, I, I learned the trade from him, and he, he was the best. And, but from the, from the beginning, I describe in this book that on our second evening together, he said, you know, Kati, we'd have very smart and beautiful children together. And I thought, is he insane? is our second dinner but uh, in fact he wasn't insane because those kids that we kidded about are now grown and far wiser than Peter and I were or are and there was a sad story towards the end of the book when he breaks the news to you that, that he's suffering from from lung cancer that was terrible and but there was that sense in the park where as you're walking through Central Park together He's also Peter Jennings, the anchor man. People are waving to him. How was that for him to be this public man? Well, it made our relationship very difficult. The minute we left our apartment, basically we were over. He was he was the public's, and uh, and that uh, that was tough. And this particular scene where I am, where I have just uh, learned that he's. Uh, had this basically a death sentence, a uh, very bad diagnosis for lung cancer, and people are still coming up and looking at me because tears were f flowing, um, like, you know, w what's this crazy woman up to? And, and Peter just, well, that was his life. I, he had been in the public eye so long, but it's, don't kid yourself, it's not easy living such a life and it certainly wasn't easy once he once he was ill but I'm I'm very happy that I was allowed um, that I was able to be with him when at, at the end because that has made it easier for our children and me to to grieve together and one last question I thought all diplomats were born cynical but the way you portray Richard Holbrook mm. he never gave in to the darkness of cynicism even though he dealt with some of the coolest political people on the planet Earth. How, how did he pull that off? He, he dealt with, with some of the coldest and, and, uh, and toughest and meanest uh, political leaders in the world, warlords of the, of the, of the worst kind. Um, and, and you're quite right, there was not a cynical bone in Richard Holbrook's body. That was the amazing thing, is that he thought there was always something that could be done to make the situation better. I mean, look at, he took uh, um, Obama's toughest foreign policy job, which was Afghanistan and, and Pakistan, thinking that he could help there. Um, he, he was a very positive person, but he was no dreamy uh, uh, romantic. He, he, I would say he, he, was, he was very realistic, but he was also very confident that America had a role to play in the world. And, uh, and that it wasn't purely a military role, that America stood for, for uh, certain ideals that, that we had to um, maintain. And of course, I, I shared that because I came here as a little refugee kid from escaping communism um, in, during the Cold War. Thank you very much. Thank you, Bill. It's a pleasure to